more of her to the family. Thank you very much for your subscription, man. It is greatly appreciated. And uh, enjoy the benefits you get of being a subscriber. Map, uh, replay packs, uh, freaking double partoofs, you name it. It's lots of emoticons as well. At any rate, boys and girls, sit tight. This is a best of three. It's the very first game, the very first match of the Home Story Cup 9 North America qualifiers. I'm Rifkin. You're watching Bay Straight TV and spawning here in the lower left corner of the map. He's playing from IVD Gaming, the Red Zerg player Zerg Zing Zing, aka Mr. Mouthful. His opponent, a Protoss player that is not Clarity Gaming, but another clan, another team called Crossfire Gaming, the Yellow Protoss Practice. So I think I think Practice kind of lucked out with these spawn locations. Oops, hang on, I gotta close some audio stuff I've opened. This is irrelevant. Oh, and because I was definitely not playing the game, because I never play the game. Oh, I gotta turn off my scroll. <laughs> there we go. Anyways, uh, this is. It was. Uh, was it? Uh, map spawn. Okay, so if you spawn top right, bottom left, there's a lot of different ways you can approach this game. You can still go for cannons, you can do early gateway aggression. You could play the game without having a headache, quite frankly. But if it's top left and bottom right, one of the biggest problems a lot of people relate to right off the bat is this incredibly wide choke. Uh, you don't typically see the double evolution chamber, Roach War, and Wall Off versus Protoss for Zerg, so a bit of a non issue in that regard. But for Protoss, man, you know, your typical Sim City here, not a problem. But over here, it takes like a whole extra gateway to wall this off. Not fun to deal with. Anyways, practice is going to come across the map with this probe early on. And again, I don't know a lot about this player, but I have seen a good chunk of Zerg Zing Zing in the past. We had him on for a show match series versus Select. He's popped up in pretty much every qualifier related to North America. So, uh, be it Red Bull, IEM, you name it, he's been there. We've got to see quite a bit of him. Now, the probe sitting here is not going to be for cannons, guys. It looks a little bit suspicious, but of course it was a gateway expanded home. So, not, uh, not really the opportunity. We do see Zerg Zing Zing pulling his drones, though. A definite overreaction, <laughs> to say the least, but if you consider the context of this possibly could have been cannons, it's actually not. Now, the fact that it's not cannons, he's recognized this goes back to mining, and one probe awkwardly placed from a scout ends up baiting a lot of lost mining time. Uh, but with how consistently regular cannon rushes have been lately, not just on the North American ladder, you watch Pro League, you watch anything you want, there's going to be cannon rushes somewhere at some point. Uh, he's actually going to get the probe. Ooh, first blood. That's a nasty loss for practice right away. Not only does that take away his scouting information, that's the probe that builds pylons. That's the probe that's supposed to proxy. This is not a good start for uh, for Mr. Practice. I guess... I guess maybe he needs some some practice with the probes. Ah, 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 anybody, anybody, anybody? Okay, anyways. <laughs> Back on the other side of the map, he's got his Nexus coming down. Uh, he didn't go for the Zealot Cancel, did in fact let it complete. But not exactly rushing out of Mothership. Okay, there we go. Mothership Core. I was going to say, he's putting a little bit of gas there, so I was wondering if he was going to skip it entirely. We have seen Protoss players actually, very much on purpose, skip the Mothership Core in the favor of uh, getting a little more, uh, a little more tech out faster, I suppose. But no, he's gonna just get it. Actually, I shouldn't think that's what, 40 out of 40? 30 out of 30? 29 out of 30, okay. It's just gonna mumble here. We'll close the bets here after the first game, guys. And uh, for those who don't know how to bet, you type exclamation mark bets, like with an S space, the number of partoofs you want to wager. So, like, let's say 15, 20, 100. And then, of course, the option one or two. Game resumed. Now some of you guys might be like, well, why would you leave the betting open all of game number one? Well, we don't have multi-betting on, so it'll give you a taste and a flavor to see how the series goes. Maybe you're right, maybe there's an upset. I don't know. Uh, but this is a very awkward wall coming down. I believe that's a hole. I believe that's two holes. I'm actually not too sure. That does look really odd to me, though. Maybe they just closed off. I'm just not used to playing uh, Protoss on this map. Actually, have, I have this one vetoed personally because I just hate... It's not the map that I hate. I hate that it's two different maps altogether. Uh, so I think he's recognized. Okay, that was a bit of an awkward gap. Starts moving out across the map, though. Doesn't have a whole lot to deal with this, though. Uh, I mean, there's one gateway with two more on the way. Three gates of aggression is fine for knocking down a third. But quite frankly, if you're going to really hurt somebody on two bases, it's got to be more like four gates. Two, uh, three... Three's all right for pressure, but three doesn't really stop anything. And what's kind of curious is he's coming up here with this force meant to kill a third, but oops, awkward, there's no third. Now this, of course, isn't because he's placed it somewhere else. He just simply hasn't intentionally gone for a third. Still droning up at home. He did pull off of gas. Sorry, I forgot to point that earlier after he took that metabolic boost. If you guys aren't watching the, uh, the gas tab down here. And 
If he is going to go for Lings, it kind of needs to be soon. You can't play off of two bases like this with no army value. I, I, Zergsing Zing is a good player, so I don't know what he's what he's got going on for him right now. But uh, the fact that he's been droning up so hard without that third might just cost him here. This is a lot of zealots in the, this mothership core. And the whole thing, the whole point is like they, they spend so much time trying to knock down this third. That's what gives you the time to build your defense at the natural. Get that Roach Warren down. To get that no cancel on the hatchery. Oh, jeez. Queen out here exposed off a of creep. It's going to die to Zealots. This is not a good start here for Zerg Zing Zing. He's got some links popping out. But, and Metabolic Boost is finishing up. But even though these Zealots do not have upgrades associated with them, they're not going to be easy to deal with. Back at home, we have a Dark Shrine on the way here, too. And it uh, looks like the Overlord also going to die before scouting that, unfortunately. So, as if this isn't bad enough for Zerg Zing Zing as is, he does at least have Spore Crawlers coming down. Now, the one at the Natural bugged out. I think he was supposed to put that one down with that drone, I think. But he'll have detection in the main. However, it's not the main he's going to need it. It's going to be the natural. We're not going to see a layer anytime soon, so that means we're not going to have Overseers available. But with the surround of the Zealots, it'll take a pretty decent start to this fight. And holds off the initial wave of attacks. Oh, no, actually doesn't. I thought he was going to clean that up a lot better than he did. Time Warp actually goes down, and now Zerg Zing Zing's in a lot of trouble. Unfortunately, he gets caught within the Time Warp, trying to, uh, like, his loop-de-loop -loop around it. Queen with one HP is going to die to the Mothership Core if the Zealots don't kill it. Yeah. We got five roaches coming out, but again, it's not roaches that he's going to need for defense, it's detection. Sporkor has been rebuilt, so this base won't die to Dark Templar by any means, but he's already taken way too much damage from this. And there, again, I want to re-emphasize, re there's no third base. And more importantly, right now, there's actually no anti-air to deal with the Mothership Core. Uh, it will back away from the Sporkor, though, having lost its its ground forces. Dark Shrine finish up here in a moment's time. Blink soon to uh, follow after. If, he, if he's going to go for Dark Templar, it's got to be now. Okay, so these are going to walk up to the base. Awkward is as awkward does. Spine Crawler here is actually really low. It might actually die. If he, if he actually took all three of the Dark Templar and focused that down, he would absolutely get that before there's any retaliation. But main base have the drones pulled on top. There's good good defense here out of Zerg Zing Zing. This was looking a little bit scary. He is going to take some drone losses, but nothing, nothing unrecoverable. However, still being on two bases at the moment is really rough and... We do see him starting to bank up gas. He takes a fourth geyser, his layer's halfway complete. And if we're going to be quite frank, guys, Mutalisks might be his best bet. There's not a lot you can do on two bases, but at the same time, I don't think this is a situation he necessarily wanted to find himself more or less forced into. Uh, the drones? The drones? Yeah, he's way oversaturated because he's got no third. 50 drones for two bases, not exactly where you would love to be. Cross the map of the defense for a Protoss play. He's got a couple Stalkers. Warping in some more. Don't forget he does have Blink available to him in a moment's time. Not quite done yet. But with those extra gateways coming down, I think the follow-up all-in is about to be initiated. Sometimes you got to debate calling this aggression. Sometimes you debate calling it all-in. But with three gateways already down, coming up to eight with the Dark Shrine, I don't really see him furthering his attack. If he had a Forge down, maybe he looks to just making this into pressure. But for the most part, this is looking pretty rough. Hydralisks may be out eventually for this, but... The strength at which he hits, the timing for practice, is going to be his best friend here. Now, the Dark Templar didn't get a lot done, but there's still a lot of damage coming into this fight. In fact, I think he's only got one left. I would have loved to have seen an Archon, I think, instead of this, but with so many Blink Stalkers, it's it's going to be somewhat irrelevant. There are not a lot of Force Fields, though, worth noting. There are, I think, two available. Yeah, Force Fields off the main. Focuses down the Sentry right away, so there's only going to be this one Force Field he has to deal with initially here. Dark Templar does get sniped, and now it's just Stalkers without any upgrades. Just simply Blink trying to fight off these Roaches, and if Zerg Zing Zing just groups up and waits, he'll be in a much better spot to take this fight. But gets a little bit awkward here on the ramp, but doesn't know if he wants to engage or disengage as we see the back and forth go off. Queen needs to get involved with that fight and start picking off that Mothership Core. We got some Hydralisks on the way, and if there's one unit that is absolutely fantastic at cleaning up Gateway Forces, it's going to be a Hydralisk. But the problem is, if he loses all these Roaches, he'll have no buffer for them. Still trying to force out this fight nonetheless. Sitting in that time warp. Stalkers are being blunked ba blunk, blinked backwards one at a time to reduce their deaths, but the Hydralis count is coming. Not here yet. He's going to have to pull drones to this. If he doesn't pull drones, if he has no buffer for the Hydralis, they will get focused down. No additional sentries remain, so there's no force fields on the ramp. The Zerg Sing Sing still fighting a full full capability here, but it's not a lot of damage, unfortunately. Hydralis are starting to push this back a little bit, but uh, he's lost a lot of drones into this. He's still on two bases. There's no third to back up and recover from, and he's not been able to make a single drone while this is going on. Still, the Blink Stalkers managed to retain their numbers. Good game is called, and practice, ladies and gentlemen, will take game number one in this best of three.